Hi, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to be going through some linear pie tutorials. Uh, today, specifically, we're going to be going through the uh, housing example notebook and uh, creating pipelines that can be submitted through to all of the new pipeline orchestration frameworks that uh, linear pie supports. So let me share my screen here. Uh, specifically today, we're going to be going through this housing notebook, as we said earlier, and the frameworks that we will be focusing on today are uh, Airflow, Argo, Kubeflow, Ray, and DVC. So by the end of this tutorial, um, you know, we will have shown basically how to create pipelines and submit pipelines to uh, each of these five frameworks. Um, yeah, so to start with, uh, let's do the following. Uh, let's run the housing notebook uh, from the start. So um, I'm going to go really quickly through the notebook here, but basically this housing uh, notebook is an example of what a data scientist workflow might be like. Um, so we, you know, we do some exploratory data analysis um, on some data, you know, some feature engineering. Uh, then we train a model and we uh, evaluate that model. And one of the things that data scientists, you know, want to do a lot is that they want to, um, you know, turn their workflows in their uh, Jupyter notebook environments into pipelines. And you know, one of the most common pipelines, and the first one that we'll be demonstrating, is the uh, Airflow uh, framework. So um, the way this works is that uh, the Linea Pi two pipeline call is the sort of you know magic API that creates pipeline files that can be understood by different orchestration frameworks. And uh, if you specify the framework to be Airflow and the output directory as follows, uh, LinearPy will actually put in this Airflow DAGs directory uh, a bunch of files that uh, can be submitted to an Airflow orchestration engine. Um, so the way to do this is the following. Um, let me open up a new terminal here. Uh, and get my virtual environment set up. Uh, examples, use cases, predict house price. Okay, so now we're in the same directory. Uh, I want to navigate to the, uh, oops, to the Airflow DAGs directory, which I specified as the output here. So uh, now we can see that uh, we have four files here. We have the module file, the requirements file, the DAGs file, and the Docker file. Um, so the Docker file is actually one of the, uh, the things that in the Airflow framework can be used to uh, you know, spin up a standalone uh, Airflow instance that we can actually submit DAGs to. So the way this works is um, we have this in our documentation here. We want to build the image here. So let's call this. Airflow pipeline. And I want to specify that I want to build this data uh, housing pipeline Docker file. And so this will go and this will build the uh, build the image. And then we uh, all we have to do to run an airflow instance is to, you know, docker run this instance, right? So uh, let's see, airflow pipeline image. And this should now spin up a Docker instance with uh, the DAG that we just built already included. So this is going to take a while. Okay, perfect. So now the uh, the login is ready. Oh, come back here. Uh, so the username is admin, and the password is printed out uh, when running Airflow standalone. And now we can see that this data uh, housing pipeline DAG is ready. And uh, to run this DAG in our Airflow example, all we simply need to do is click trigger DAG here, and away we go. And so we can see here uh, yeah, that we have one run queued up. And we can see that the tasks are passing and uh, being queued up. So let's just you know confirm that the two tasks that we have here will both run correctly and that the teardown task will run. Perfect. Yep. And just like that, uh, you know, we've created a pipeline uh, from LinearPy that can be run on the Airflow orchestration framework engine. So the uh, 
Next orchestration uh, engine that we want to submit to is Argo. So Argo is actually a little bit trickier because it is Kubernetes based. Um, so we will actually need to install and set up Argo first. So to do this, um, we will actually have a couple of commands here. So the first one that we will want to run is to set up a namespace uh, in our Kubernetes cluster to, um, to run Argo. And then we will want to uh, apply this uh, YAML file, which uh, the Argo project has conveniently provided to us, which will uh, set up a local uh, instance of Argo. Um, and then uh, one of the other things that is really important for the Argo uh, setup is to patch the authentication. So the uh, Argo website itself is, uh, has a little bit more details about this, but um, this way, after the Argo server is patched, um, we should be able to you know, log in without uh, server-side authentication, and we should be able to submit our jobs. Um, so once again, this is just for demo purposes. Uh, And once that is patched, we should be able to access the um, the Argo instance. So let's try that real quick, 2746. Mm. Not quite set up maybe. Okay, here we go. Perfect. Okay, so now that we have our Argo uh, framework set, our, uh, Argo instance setup. Uh, let's now, uh, you know, actually generate some uh, files that can be used to submit a DAG to Argo. Uh, so with LinearPy, this is super simple. All you need to do is switch the framework out. So in this case, we're switching our framework out to um, Argo. And I'm also going to change the directory here um, just to make sure that we don't overwrite the files from our previous uh, previous Airflow example. Perfect. And uh, let's see, we don't need this anymore. So let's go back. And now instead, we're going to navigate to our Argo directory. And once again, uh, Argo will also create a same set of four files, a DAG file, a module file, a requirements file, and a Docker file. Um, Argo is Kubernetes based. So we actually need to um, build the image that will be used to run the uh, pods. and uh, the way to do this is actually using the Docker file. So I'm going to uh, peek at the top of the uh, Docker file, and it'll actually tell us uh, the command that um, we want to use uh, to build this image. And uh, this is really important because this command will tag the image as data housing pipeline, uh, linear pi version. And this is what the DAG file will be expecting to see. So uh, let's uh, wait, wait a little bit for this to run. Perfect. So now that that's uh, in our image repository, we should just be able to run the uh, DAG file here to submit our DAG to Argo. So let's check this now. And this is perfect. Oh, I don't know what IRS pipeline is, but uh, here we can see our data housing pipeline has been submitted. So let's see, it should be running. Oops, sorry. And yep, and now we can see that the tasks are being queued up and being run. So now we're running the, uh, the session. And in a couple of minutes here, this should uh, complete. And uh, what's really great about the Argo UI as well is that um, it shows us that the two um, artifacts that we have created here, so the clean data housing and the linear model housing um, are being created here. And then the teardown task is running now. <laughs> and uh, any second now, this whole DAG should be finished as well. And uh, perfect. So uh, yeah, just like that, we've also used LinearPy to create uh, you know, DAG files that can be submitted to the Argo orchestration framework. So the next framework in our uh, example here is Kubeflow. Um, so 
much like Argo, uh, Kubeflow is also Kubernetes based. So we will want to set up a local instance of Kubeflow in order to submit our jobs to. Um, so kind of like Argo, we will want to create a namespace. Let's see, let's use this one here. And uh, very much like uh, Argo, we will want to apply some of the um, you know, configurations that Kubeflow uh, documentation themselves provides in order to spin up a local instance of Kubeflow. So let's try this. Okay. And uh, Kubeflow usually takes a little bit to spin up. So I'm actually going to skip over first. And um, once again, with uh, Kubeflow, just like with Argo, um, all that's needed actually uh, to generate the pipeline files from the linear pi side is to simply switch out the framework uh, from Argo to Kubeflow. And once we run this again, yep, uh, we should have a Kubeflow directory. Okay. Um, and now let's actually set up our Kubeflow localhost. 3,000. Perfect. Cool. So uh, yeah, right now we can go to the runs and obviously there's no runs uh, active or available right now because we haven't submitted anything. Um, so we can go to the Kubeflow DAG files that we've generated and much like Argo, um, same set of files, right? There's the Docker file, the DAG file, the module file, and the requirements file. Um, because Kubeflow is also uh, Kubernetes based. We will have to build the uh, Docker image. And this uh, Docker image will basically be used to uh, spin up the pods that will be running the tasks in Kubeflow. So once again, we're just going to copy this line here, uh, making sure that the image is built under data housing pipeline and tagged as linear pi again. Mm, let's wait for this. OK. Perfect. So now that the image is built, um, submitting the DAG is uh, really simple. Once again, it's uh, just running the DAG file here. So we're going to kick that off. And now we can switch over to our Kubeflow pipeline. And instantly, we can see that a run for the data housing pipeline has been kicked off. And once again, we can monitor through the UI just to make sure that all the tasks uh, will be queued up and complete successfully. So. Um, let's give this another couple of minutes, maybe. That's the uh, data housing task. And then how about the model task? Okay. And then the teardown task. Perfect. And just like that, um, we have created uh, pipeline files for Kubeflow and submitted them to Kubeflow as well. OK, so the next framework that we'll be going through is Ray. Um, so Ray can be run locally. Uh, so I think that's probably how we're going to run this example here. So just like uh, all the frameworks before, uh, the way to generate Ray DAG files uh, is simply uh, from LinearPy at least to switch the framework uh, to Ray. And I'm also going to switch the output directory as well to not overwrite uh, files from the previous example. And uh, yep, once this is run, we can go to our output directory here, which is uh, Ray DAGs. So switch over Ray DAGs. Cool. Um, so with Ray, uh, this is uh, a an example that we can actually run locally. So uh, I think one of the things that we will need here is, oh, sorry, is to make sure that in your uh, Python environment that you have a, uh, you know, 
a version of Ray installed here. So in this case, I have Ray 2.2.0. And um, this makes it actually very easy to submit Ray DAG files. So um, uh, yeah, and like with uh, pretty much any of the other uh, orchestration frameworks, the way to submit the DAG to Ray is by running this Python file here. So let's kick that off. And we can see that Ray is uh, now initializing a, uh, a workflow manager and creating a workflow job for the DAG that we've just created. And this will uh, run, and we can see tasks are running and completing. And let's see. Yeah, and we can see just like that that the, uh, the DAG has completed running. So that's um, basically how to create files, uh, pipeline files that can be run using the Ray workflows. And the last example that we're going to be going through is DVC. So we can switch back over. And just like all of the other pipeline integration frameworks, the way to create uh, DAG files for DVC is to uh, switch the framework to DVC in the linear pi to pipeline call. And we're just going to run this again. And this will create a bunch of files for DVC. And when we, we can navigate over to that directory and take a look. Uh, so DVC is a little bit different um, in that it's a YAML-based uh, you know, workflow framework. So uh, you'll notice that actually DVC does not have a DAG file. Instead, that uh, there's a DVC YAML file, which will define the, uh, the pipeline. And uh, Another crucial difference with DVC is that the tasks are not all in the DAG file as well. The tasks are each in their individual files. Um, so it's actually quite easy to run DVC pipelines as well. Uh, all we need to do is uh, get init and DVC init this directory uh, to basically set up uh, DVC in this directory. And all we need to do to run this is DVC repro. And so now we can see we're running the stage, the uh, clean data housing, and then the linear model housing. And the great thing about DVC as well, since that it's running locally, we can actually see that um, the training data pickle file and the linear model pickle file have been created, which means that the pipeline has been run. Awesome. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, Today, we've uh, basically demoed how to uh, create pipeline files and submit them to the uh, five orchestration frameworks that LinearPy currently supports. Um, once again, they are Airflow, Argo, Kubeflow, Ray, and DVC. Uh, yeah, feel free to refer back to this tutorial for you know, the pipeline integration or the pipeline framework that you're most interested in or that uh, you know, your organization is using. And yeah, have a good day.